we're recording now. So I hope you can hear me because I've changed the audio settings. But if not, welcome to an hour of silence with the PyScript fun meeting. <laughs> Nicholas, I think you're muted. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> can anyone hear Nicholas? <laughs> it's the story of my life, Fabio. No, Honestly, <laughs> I keep talking and everyone ignores me. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry for this sorry for everyone watching the recording uh, we can be serious now <laughs> is this is the stand-up week fabio this is this is the thing for this week it's stand-up week um okay so welcome to the pie script fun let's be serious about this this is where we we don't have fun at all and we're all serious about things and we show demos of stuff so without further ado who has a demo to show one Okay, uh, Fabio, the other one. If I... you've got your hand up, your camera's off, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I may, I can show the PyScript.com um, CLI. It's not released Perfect. yet, but it will be soon. So, okay, this sounds like a perfect demo. Um, okay, um, can I just just so I get a sense of of timings, Fabio, uh, the elder. Uh, is yours, uh, uh, you know, intense, big, long one, or is it just a small five-minute one? I think it's probably five to ten minutes. Five to ten um, minutes. And probably just refining the, what I showed two weeks ago. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So five to ten minutes. And Fabio, the younger? Uh, it depends how much of the CLI you want me to show you, but I think maybe ten minutes should be plenty. Okay. Maybe five. Cool. Even okay. So, if I don't... Talk too much. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking we could get the shorter ones in sooner. But if you're both about ten minutes, then I don't mind which one of you goes first. I mean, it's so confusing. You're both called Fabio, so I can't even. <laughs> I'll apologize for not having the camera, but I do have a guest, so yeah, and he tends to go and sit on my lap. That's my yeah, son. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, don't worry. <laughs> um, he can help with the presentation, um, with the CLI. Uh, okay, uh, Fabio the Elder, since you're on my camera and I'm looking at you right now, so, you know, let's go go with uh, with yours. The floor's yours, matey. All right. All right. Um, also, I blame Antonio for any distractions. He's been distracting me. <laughs> He's very distracting. Um, I think that's the right one. You should be seeing a, a PyWeb UI uh, page. <laughs> So this is basically the work that I've demoed, I think, a couple of weeks ago on um, on the other community call. And uh, I've been working on a foundation framework to map UI elements, uh, basically standard HTML UI elements, and possibly uh, allow folks to extend it with a specific UI uh, fr uh, framework for JavaScript, wrapping them in a Pythonic API uh, that feels natural and feels just part of PyScript or or a, a Pythonic module. So the intent here is um, create that API that works well with PyDOM and basically has uh, query capabilities baked in uh, and may and map. UI elements from Python to JavaScript to HTML. Um, so I'll start with the demo, and then we can uh, look at the examples. So this this whole UI is written in um, with that framework. So if I go and see, uh, look at the page itself. Uh, actually, not this um, page source. Um, this is all of the source that I, I, I put here. Um, and everything else is generated dynamically by the framework itself. So um, starting from the basic components, basically um, uh, we're mapping almost all the meaningful HTML uh, elements. Uh, the, the, the demo itself is not um, full, uh, entirely showing all the elements that we have. Um, we have, I don't know, tens of elements, uh, and I'm, I've mapped most of most of them, the ones that made sense. Um, how do I use this? 
basically I import the library or the module, sorry, and then I just call the element that I want to create, in this case button, and then I can use that element to uh, with the the baseline PyScript uh, features like when uh, and other things or the PyDOM uh, module as well. So if I do when click, I pass the button itself. Um, well, here it should be button equals button uh, click me. And then I call the Lambda. If I click here, I see the message popping, the alert popping. Uh, divs, same thing. I can create a div, uh, inputs. All of them are basically created by those um, grids. Uh, grid is the only one that is not a basic HTML element, is is an additional one on top. Um, but basically, um, I wanted to, uh, this is also a, a typo. Uh, this has two elements. One is this, and then the second one is a different text. Uh, and as you can see, um, container elements uh, accept other elements or collections of elements in their uh, signature so that you can basically build uh, more complex API uh, UIs. Headers, um, anchor elements, and stuff like that. I'm not going to go through all of them. It's not interesting to just look at them, but just wanted to give a, a, look in, a, a perception of how it looks like. Uh, I also added a markdown one, basically, uh, from PyWeb, you just import markdown, and anything you pass here as a markdown text, it gets converted to markdown. Um, and then I also added a shoelace um, components API that maps shoelace. This is not too developed. Like, I, I only did those elements. It has many more, um, but I didn't have time. And probably, I. I'm very debated if we should merge that as part of the standard library. I think we should not and should put it somewhere else. So this is just an experiment. Um, but for the sake of looking at things, you know, uh, all you do here is import. Uh, right now is from PyWeb dot UI import shoelace, and then you get all of those components. You do not need to import CSS or JavaScript, or you don't need to include those in your uh, HTML file. <coughs> we load them for you. And um, uh, so how does it look like? So if for an alert, I just create this. Uh, and the, the, the gist is all the same for all of all the elements. You just you just call the the, um, the element itself, create it and add to to other parts of your UI, um, either appending or in the signature. And um, if those elements have attributes, like in this case, this is a complex element that uh, has a main area, and then you can pass the image in the header or footer or things like this. You, you just pass them in your um, um, when, when instantiating the object. Uh, and the same goes for even also the basic elements. For instance, if an input has specific um, attributes like disabled or uh, read only and things like this, you just pass them. Uh, let me show the gallery. This is a more um, showing more complex examples. So on this one, it's a simple app that converts uh, text to markdown. So if I come here and do uh, let me see something like uh, fingers and convert it just works uh, the, the code for it is quite con uh, simple I just create the elements uh, a button text area etc I add <coughs> basically I, I add the event handler for when I click the button and then when I click the button I just call markdown and append the the result to the HTML attribute I assign the, the result to the HTML uh, attribute of the div, And this is how I create the whole UI. Um, another more complex example, a tic-tac-toe. And most of the code really is just to handle, to deal with uh, winning conditions and things like that. Um, but if so, 
I actually did an add here. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, so basically to create this whole UI here, the, the UI side of it is just creating those divs and the elements directly. Um, and then everything else is just really uh, creating the role, um, uh, basically managing the clicking of each one of the, the boxes. Um, and then um, winning conditions and things like this. This, by the way, is in part inspired by the demo that Chris did with LTK. A um, couple of things. So when you create an element, uh, let's say an H2, uh, it actually creates an, a JavaScript element uh, as well in the JavaScript land. And it basically, it's, it's basically an element that is attached to your Python instance and lives with that instance. Each one of the attributes that map to JavaScript attributes are the scripters that basically map to the JavaScript element. So you basically, when you set into Python, in a Python element, um, it's a real-time operation. It's not a lazy uh, type of operation where you, you, you do later. Mm -hmm. I initially had an implementation, and I'm saying this mostly to explain why and things, and probably those can be uh, useful things for also invent or other framework, frameworks on top of, of PyScript. Um, I started this trying, well, in my trying to have a render type of method and generating text uh, to up, append to uh, HTML nodes. Um, I had difficulty managing events, uh, attributes, and just changing attributes of, of, of things, uh, especially uh, ones that interact with the DOM and, and um, that basically show in the UI compo uh, uh, component of those nodes. Other thing, uh, events in the screen, etc. Um, it is, I couldn't find a good way that made me happy around if how to manage resizing the window or other things like this. Um, so anyway, this is uh, the bulk of it. My the PR that I had open for two three weeks now is changed. I changed the title, and I'm going to be changing from draft to um, to a ready PR um, in a couple of hours uh, when I finish to manage the the shoelace component part uh, part of it. But yeah, any questions or whatnot? Uh, Martin. Martin, go for it. So, just looking at the um, example code there, mm -hmm. if you go back, if you scroll back down to the where you create the yeah the create tic tac toe method, right? So we create all the elements inside each of the constructors, right? D of H two creates elements. Yeah. But what? Where in this code does it actually get added to the? Uh, where does it actually get added to somewhere that's visible, right? Because I'm assuming. Right. Yes. Um, Basically, in the well, in the code itself, there's an extra line basically saying uh, pydom dot body dot append uh, the result of this. And where and where's the, yeah oh, yes I don't know, yeah oh, where is that? Code. Hold on yeah yeah. Oh, that was that in the in the in the gallery kind of bit code. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. The gallery code. Uh, actually, if I do. Yeah, that was just. I just wanted to clear that up to make sure. It, yeah. Basically, the grid itself um, yeah. is appended yes. like this. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, there are two main ways like you can do that: either append or pass those in the signature uh, yeah. function. Yeah. Cool. I mean, this is this is awesome work. Um, I I want to ask a question. So I'm some. Well, I am some idiot third party developer sort of thing, uh, and I. And I want to make, I don't know, a map widget. Is there a kind of a way for me to just plug in? The, you know, how easy is it for me to extend the uh, the available widgets um, for my own? Oh, purposes? yes. That's, Great that, it's the extensibility um, I'm asking about, really, basically. Yeah. Let me show you. Uh, change what I'm sharing. Hold on. Change windows. I think it's this one. Yeah. All right. Oh, 
one second. <laughs> the cat's typing now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Da, da, da. <clears throat> okay. I'm waiting so... for Fabio's cat to get sight of Alex's dog on a call and just watch the kind of pet related mayhem <laughs> that <laughs> Is your dog friendly? I I hope I, I hope he is. Um anyway. Uh so this is a new element, a grid element that basically does use grid template columns to um, yeah to basically lay out things in in, in rows and columns and all what it does is basically um, in there inherit from from this one this base class I now you should change the name it's it's mostly like a, a elements that have a content within them like um, like paragraph or divs or whatever uh, compared to br or others that or image that don't have anything really um and uh basically most of them have the same structure uh the 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 content based ones have uh what we call content and and basically in, in this case here the grid itself expects a layout a layout and these are other uh, attributes of it uh pass everything to the base class so basically that all the the scripters that have been passed uh, as inputs, they are mapped to JavaScript um, attributes as well. Uh, and then in this case, I set the style to the grid that I want. Uh, and then here, mm -hmm. oh yeah, this this one actually I should change and I can just remove this um, and remove this because the base class and it basically handles all of the descriptors that I've defined. Um, but the gist of it is that uh, the base class, it's, uh, class itself, uh, let me show you the implementation. Uh, when you create it, it basically creates a JavaScript object um, because PyDOM creates a JavaScript object. Uh, it deals with the style first and then initialize all the properties that map to JavaScript properties. Uh, in this case, basically, if the, um, if the attribute is passed map, uh, basically maps to a Java a descriptor that I've defined as JS property. I basically set the attributes um, and I'm just dealing with, with managing errors here. Uh, does it answer your question? Yeah, I mean, su such a lot of this is feels familiar because we're doing a similar sort of exercise in, in the invent framework thing, but clearly invent widgets have a different intention to to these widgets because you're mirroring what's in the DOM, if you see what I mean. You have a P widget or whatever, whereas ours is a little bit more abstract to make it beginner friendly. But I mean, this is great. I mean, the important thing for me is that if you move from, say, an invent widget to one of these widgets, it feels so familiar. And we've got that this thing I keep banging on about this kind of journey. Um, yes. and there's, there's no bumps in the road. So folks encountering the PyScript platform, they feel there's a kind of a, a sense of they're being pulled on a trajectory to, to, to being able to build more advanced and, and stuff like that. Um, Martin, sorry, yes. Actually, real quick, just to comment yeah. on what you said. Um, in general, most of the high-level widgets that I've been thinking about have some something in JavaScript land that uh, that is mapped between the two, right? Like. A grid, for instance, or I don't know, a, a, a card. Um, I may have different things in the JavaScript side that don't fully map to what I have in Python, but my Python class should be able to basically manipulate those JavaScript components yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, right. So if you do like, I don't know, card bot dot blink, maybe it's it doesn't have a blink attribute, but it will be basically manipulating the, the JavaScript side for it. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Martin, you had Martin. your hand up. Yeah, there's two things. So could you go back? There's two things. One of the things I thought might be cool to add to the JS property as a simple extension was uh, a kind of a getter and a setter on the property for where I'm defining a property on a thing that doesn't exactly map to the underlying. Um... Oh, so basically so, a name. A name for it's Python and then maps to a different name in JavaScript. Or or, or just, yeah, I, yes, either map to a different name is the simple one. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I, yes. 
Uh, and actually, this is, I, I I didn't fully. This was a, honestly a quick a quick one. Uh, we can do better here uh, with Naomi and. Um, yeah, that was the bit I didn't. Understand. The bit I didn't understand was why you needed the custom property there, but we can talk about that offline. It was like I, yeah. it, it, I think it. But anyway, when the when the descriptors configured, it could mm -hmm. take a couple of options. Like one is I map actually to this name. This name maps mm -hmm. to this. So there's a simple name translation, but then there's a potential kind of data translation. Okay, this value, yes. small, medium, and large, means this, and so it could be a little getter, a little two. You could just so that you could reuse the J as property. I could say, do this when you're getting it, run it through this function. When you're setting it, run it through this function, and then that makes the translations. But then the next, mm -hmm. so the part part of this too is then the the the, the non. Yes, so that. In in your example where you did the grid, the layout property mm -hmm. is not defined as a property. So that so have you so right <clears throat> yes, but um, yes because that was the implementation done three weeks ago and didn't change yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Part of me trying to get this to work was because I I, I changed the whole elements uh, module and not the rest. But but yes, you're right. There's an additional thing too, which is safeguards. Uh, for those properties. Some of them are read-only, and we want to show, like, hey, if you try to set it, it's not because there's an error, but the JavaScript yeah. underlying properties is, is read-only. Or type checking, too. Uh, or some of those JavaScript properties are, are enums, right? Like, all those things, I think we should add them to make life easier for, for yeah. users. Yeah, and and exactly right. So the thing for me, like, that, you know, I've looked at this code a bit more now, and then with the invent stuff, because really what I want to do as I, th I think would be a really nice demo would be to show that these level widgets can be used in the invent builder, for example, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that they can interchange yeah. because the thing is, and I think that's the thing like we've talked about, right? We just need to make sure because that, that they are, they don't have to inherit from the same classes. For example, we don't in invent doesn't have, need to necessarily use PyWeb UI JS mm -hmm. property class. But the, but if the widgets quack the same way, which is in terms of like the validation when they're created, which I think they do now, right? I think we really we have exactly the same things, right? Descriptors and mm -hmm. um, the 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 elements are created at the same part. The life cycle is the same, and so if we just make sure those protocols are the same, then it's it's mix and match between the two. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we let's let's post later and and pair real quick. Uh, the, the reason it's and it's done this way it was honestly to save space um so and create the properties dynamically so that we don't i don't have a hundred lines i i the plan is to basically automatically parse them and append the attributes of each each one of the classes just to save space to be honest right um, this is that's this is, it for me. This is so cool. No, it's not because I've got one last question. Sorry, Fabio. Right. Um, does it work with <laughs> MicroPython? Uh, great question. In theory, yes. Uh, as I mentioned, <laughs> I had I had that. No, and the reason yeah. was that I had that memory. Um, ah, the, that's well, that, that reminds me. When I sorry, just to hijack that sentence there. Um, Damien was rather concerned to hear of that. Um, mm -hmm. And. Uh, you know, he wants to fix that, but if you could let him have a, a repeat, you know, something he can go on, um, so he can just look at what's been going on, then, um, yeah, uh, you know, he, he would really, really appreciate that. Um, sorry, Martin has another question. Go for it. One more question. Fabio, can you show your screen? Should you start the stream again. Yes. Just, sorry. just because I want to hear more Discord cricket noises, not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. I I think that's yes. Okay. So in the, could you go to the part of the Pi Web UI, the base um, base element where it initializes the properties? Yeah. In the constructor when it loops over. This. Uh, yeah. My only question is that enough given subclassing lo looping over the class dict items? Yes, should be. Okay. Also, I I think I saw some difference between this and this. Basically, basically accessing the JavaScript 
um, element in doing this way, but then I wasn't able to reproduce. So I'm, I still need to figure that out. And most and, and all tests really right now are, are running only on Pyodide. So I want to try and see if there's any difference between this and the other two state the, the two statements, and if um, there's a difference between Pyodide and, and uh, MicroPython. But yeah. In theory, you just need to pass the the the, um, the, the properties, and it should be able to just pop out. Yeah, I, yeah. I just, I just wasn't sure because we had that we had done a bunch of stuff in the invent stuff, and then I saw this. I was like, oh, maybe you can just loop it over the class dict, even if even just, and that works no matter how deep the inheritance hierarchy is of your widget. Right? It's, if it's, I, it's, if it's I not the a... class dict; it's the object dict. That's the big difference. The object well, will have no, all the attributes well, from all the parent yes, classes. Yes, 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 yes. It's... Uh, yes, that was a reason why I put class self class dot dict. Um, be, well, I think we're doing that exercise together, right? Like we we're trying to get from. It wasn't the the dict. Yeah. <laughs> in the object instance, wasn't showing the um, the the all the class the the. Uh, it was the getting the properties, that, that. wasn't it? I remember it now. And we had so, yeah. so many kind of Baroque ways of doing it because it exactly. works sometimes yes. in MicroPython, but not in this other thing. And yeah. Yes. Right. And, and that's my question, because if if I inherit my foo widget and add properties at each level, in a, if my foo widget inherits from my bar widget, inherits from my baz widget, and I've got properties defined at each level, looking at the yes. plastic won't, won't find it, will it? Yes, it will. It will. Well, in fact, uh, all the basically these are all global attributes that are added to the base class, um, and they are visible. Oh, okay. Cool. In theory, they 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 work. In theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> cool. Again, the, the the other difficulty was that I had I I wasn't able to just work on this for three days, whatever. Like I, I had to work. That's of time here and there over three weeks so the context switch was a little yeah difficult so it may have issues and whatnot i think i think the the aspect of dynamically adding the properties like you're doing there is actually really important for a for something like this because it, like you know it's not about it doesn't need to be about readability right it's about keeping the size of that framework super small yeah so yeah. that it's yeah but still like you want to provide a good experience to to our users, like with docs and stuff like this. Um, yeah, and it would, us, mm -hmm. yeah, it would be more code, but it would be less actually runtime. You know what I mean, it would be more. It's slightly more code if you actually define the properties. Yeah, as they are, but um, yeah, we'll see. Um, and yeah, anyway, this is like initial uh, state. I think we will be learning and, and improving. Cool. Um, I've just looked at my watch and we've been going 35 minutes. <laughs> you guys ask a lot of questions. Uh, and, well, yeah, exactly. But this is why we call it PyScript Fun is because we're having fun and things. Uh, I, what I really like about this is that when Martin puts his hand up and says, I have a quick question, it's actually a code review he has. It's not... <laughs> but that's a good thing because we're learning together, which is the important thing. Um, Fabio, uh, the, the elder, are you done? And I can now pass the floor to Fabio the younger. Okay, Fabio the younger. Floor's yours, matey. So, um, so we, the open source side of things, we have a PyScript CLI that some people may use. Uh, it's a little bit out of date. If you check when was last time it uh, it was released, and uh, Madur did a bunch of work on it, as and uh, I was trying it out, and I saw a couple of things. So I've been tweaking here and there some uh, some edge cases. Uh, and then we, I think almost everybody in the team already tried. PyScript.com does have a CLI that's in, in progress. Uh, we've tried it in the past. There was a couple of uh, very, very, very rough things. Uh, and uh, we've been kind of smoothing out. Um, so that's what my, my demo is going to be like. Um, so since this is a CLI, it's going to be mostly just the terminal. So it might be a little bit boring, but it's also not as nice as um, Fabio's um it's probably better don't be shy i don't think so <laughs> okay so 
one of the main reasons why we wanted to offer PyScript.com CLI uh, or a CLI for PyScript.com was because obviously now you can drag folders into the editor, uh, but you might want to use a different flow. You might want to use whatever editor you want, VS Code, Vim, uh, maybe Max if you're crazy. I just had to put it there for the flame wars. Uh, anyway, um, you can do whatever you want, use whatever tool you want if you don't want to use the editor that we have on the website. Um, and then you would normally would have to go to your folder, drag it to the editor, and then it gets put on PyScript.com, and then you go to PyScript apps and we host it for you. Um, with the editor, uh, it's actually a enhancement of the open source side of the open source uh, PyScript CLI. So the create and run are, are there. Um, we've added a command that allows you to just run a setup. So let me just show you. Whoop. Probably should increase the font a little bit, right? No, oh, it's fine because all we can see is just the window. So okay. it makes no, <laughs> make, makes no difference how large the window looks to you. It all looks the same size to us and we can read it okay, perfectly. Perfect. So don't worry. Uh, so running just a PyScript command, there's a bunch of things. There's a copy, a create like we have on the open source, uh, delete, download, uh, info list, a bunch of other stuff. A lot of these extra commands come from, or they are meant to be used specifically on the PyScript.com site. So how would you use it? You have a setup command where um, you get a, a nice bunny. Yeah, Fabio, I, I stole it from your login. <laughs> and then ask you, uh, do you have an account? If you do not have one account, it, it, we'll open a browser bunny. window for you, dump you into the registration page, uh, and then you press um, enter and you get back, and then you come back with the flow, which would be something like this. We say then that the preferred method of using the CLI would be using an API key, so you don't have to keep re-authenticating because we're using sessions uh, and it might take, uh, after maybe a week, you have to re-authenticate. Re so then with the API key, that doesn't happen. Uh, so I'm going to say that I don't have one, just so you see what happens. So then if you do not have one, do you want to create one? If you say yes, we do it for you. You don't have to even bother about it. We just do the magic for you. Um, I'm going to say no, just so it doesn't uh, do it because I already actually have one. Um, and that's it. My browser was open uh, and I logged in and everything is fine. So now I want to create a PyScript project. You can just do PyScript create. You can call it a name. There's a bunch of other things, but I'm not going to pass it a name. And Antonio might be very happy about this. Oh, I'm using an old version of the open source one. <laughs> That's why. It's live demo. It it's, never it's, I was going to say, it's right? not a demo until something goes wrong. So, Yeah. Just give so a description. In, SDF, in main, SDF. <laughs> yeah, in main, you can actually skip this. This is kind of why I wanted to demo it, because I'm t I think Antonio was very ha would be very happy about it, that you can actually would be able to... Uh, Keep it, but uh, I reinstalled the CLI and I got an older version than the one that's in my, so that didn't work. Um, now I have a my PyScript, uh, which has all the things that we would see, and then if we do here, and we can go. And then say PyScript fun. Yeah. And now I can just upload the mothership. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then if I do click, I know I'm always sharing my um my editor, but if you go to that URL, you'll see that it's PyScript fun. Let me actually just, I'm going to change. <clears throat> Give me a second. I'll go actually share the screen. It'll be easier. Go and see a bunch of places, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, say hello, PyScript fun. Bravo. There's another little thing that 
I actually worked on today. So let's assume that you already have a PyScript or, or, or you have a, yeah, let's say you have a PyScript um, file or app in a folder and you want to upload it, you can just go PyScript upload. And then it's going to say that, oh, I didn't find a configuration file. And we kind of need that for us to do the upload to PyScript.com. So then if you do not have one, you can just say, yes, I want one. Then you can choose a type. At the moment, the default is up. So let's go with that. Then name of the project. Um, you can call, call it whatever you want. I'll just go with the default. I don't want to give it a thing. Uh, oh, yeah. I need to log in because I didn't actually um, did the login properly. <laughs> uh, but then this would do exactly what we did, which was would upload this one. Uh, actually, I think the reason it, why it failed is it, not It was a there. conflict in the project name, yeah. Fabio. I have one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what happens when you are testing things. <laughs> That's the thing we should on that on that error message, right? Obviously, a four hundred nine is a is a common one. Maybe go, hey, you've already got a project called this. Yeah. So I I changed some things to handle a couple of um, error codes like we had, but I kind of forgot about four hundred nine. So that's also good dog footing here. <laughs> and obviously now I already created a um, a PyScript TOML file, but uh, if we go here. Refresh the page. I have my PyScript app, and uh, there's uh, my my config that was generated for me, and then there's a bunch of things that this is just test code. Uh, that's it. Nice. Awesome. Do you want to stop staring? Yeah, it's really cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Any questions for Fabio? No, no. I'm just confirming. So we basically added some interactive user experience improvements, right? Yeah, because uh, what we had before, obviously, this is not released. So this is like the ideally the initial <laughs> cut when we release it. But before what we had was, oh, we don't have a config. Uh, make sure yeah, you do it, something it. and do it again. And I yeah, think it's I a nicer user experience if you actually prompt the user. I need a thing. Give me the thing or I give you some same defaults and then you can keep on going. Uh, cool. Yeah, Martin. Yeah, that setup, Fabio, that you did is really nice. In fact, that gets the API key for you. That's that's yeah, really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have one feature request. Can I have a minus minus no bunny flag so I don't get to see <laughs> Fabio's text bunny all the time? Um, I think um, it, this might be a, a vote thing if everybody agrees with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, can we add another one to say an Anto bunny flag? Okay, so I'm I have another feature request. We like London buses. We arrive in groups of three. Uh this yes. one's gonna put a cat among the pigeons. Could you possibly add a flag so that it it will output either a settings.toml or a settings.json? Yes. Uh, we could do that. Because uh, the, initially the, I actually used JSON just to use JSON dumps, but yeah, we can do one or the other. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not really that hard. Yeah, I mean, clearly, you know, the web world is all JSON y, the Python world is all Tomily, and we support both because we want to honor both kind of traditions. Um, but, you know, as a result of that, we also need to let folks choose Dude. themselves. But yeah, that's a, that's a good shout because yeah. I actually had JSON first, and then I was like, actually, we. When we have a template, like it, we always use uh, PyScript.tom or something like that. Let's go Tomo first. But that's a, that's a good shot. Yeah, I'll yeah, change yeah. that. <laughs> cool. Cool. Uh, Antonio, bravo for the uh, uh, rapid provision of artwork in the chat channel. Uh, I don't know if anybody's <laughs> yeah. seen. Um, uh, it, it, it just popped up for me. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think that's Fabio's is kind of 50% done already since we now have the source material. We just need the flag. Oh, uh, look at that. That's a yeah. thing of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, just wanted to say really great work. Um, really love the attention to details for, for users. Like small things, but they really count. So, yeah. Awesome. Good job. Yeah. Bravo. Okay. Any more from anybody else? Okay. 
Well, that was a fun meeting, which is probably a good thing because it's the PyScript fun meeting. Um, so, uh, uh, thanks for attending. I'm just going to stop the video.